Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. This is gonna be the final video of our special week. But you might say, final video? Didn't Abraham said we were gonna have seven days, like both Saturday and Sunday? Yes, we are gonna have both days. But there's gonna be a small change. Tomorrow, Sunday, if you're watching this at the day that it aired, uh, we're gonna have a live stream. It's gonna be at, at 12 or probably like 11 or 12 Mexico time so that uh, our friends uh, in other parts of the world can also um, tune in and uh, have some fun. We're gonna be doing the rendering uh, tomorrow. We're gonna be working with Marmots, but today we're gonna jump uh, straight into Marvelous Designer. We're gonna be working with this. Just a quick announcement. We just released a new course for 3D Code. 3D Code is an amazing software that can do pretty much everything. You can model, you can sculpt, you can paint, you can retopo. Like it's a very complete package. It's a uh, price point. It's also very, very accessible. And I've heard about some studios that do use it every now and then, especially for hand painted textures. If you're thinking about doing stuff like a League of Legends and World of Warcraft, I know a lot of people do their texturing inside of uh, 3D Code because it has some very nice, uh, good painting techniques there. So the course has just released and you can check that link down here for our Skillshare promotion. I'm, gonna come out, I'm not going to play the commercial right now. We're just going to jump in straight into it. Uh, but check it out if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, 3D Code. So we're back in Marvelous Designer and um, we need to take a look at the uh, patterns that we have right here. The patterns, as you can see, the our dress is like very nicely laid out and everything. We're going to be exporting it in this pose. I think it's a really creepy, nice looking pose for our uh, character. It gets uh, some very nice wrinkles going as well. And uh, we're going to be able to texture it with this specific shape in mind. Uh, this, of course, is going to create some issues, if you wish, for instance, on the armpits, since there's a little bit more ambient occlusion. Once we jump into into a substance painter, we're going to get a little bit more dirt there. Um, but just just keep in mind, we could, of course, do it uh, like in a T-pose traditionally, uh, but I think it's going to look a little bit better if we do it like this. So, um, yeah, what we're going to need to do is we need to organize the UVs. As you can see up here, we have a couple of different uh, windows. I'm going to jump back to the 2D pattern window because I do want to fix a couple, not fix, I'm going to change a couple of things to make sure that the patterns and the cloth texture that we're eventually going to be adding uh, flows in the best possible way. So um, whenever you have two pieces that are like split, if you were to create a pattern, you're going to see a seam line, right? And seam lines are not bad, like cloths have seam lines. I'm wording my uh, Elden Ring right now. Elden Ring shirt and you can see the seam lines whoop, like here and here so it, it's okay to have the seam lines but we want to reduce them as much as possible so for instance I don't think it would be a good idea to have a seam line running down the middle and down the back I'm gonna select uh, these two pieces right here and I'm gonna um, select actually go into the pattern options I like this guy right here and I'm just gonna say merge there we go so now it's a single uh, pattern same for this one click here right click and then merge and now it's a single pattern. It shouldn't change the simulation. As you can see, the simulation here should pretty much remain the same. And uh, it should give us a nice uh, a nice effect. Um, other than that, I, I think we're fine. I think that, that like that's pretty much all we need for, for the stitching things. We could stitch this one right here. If I were to say here, uh, merge as well. Let's see if we can merge these two guys. We're going to get like a weird shape. This is very, very common. As you can see, things are going to change a little bit. So we would need or we need to to re-simulate, but this is gonna give us a better pattern for the skirt. Uh, one thing I'm actually gonna do, so I'm gonna go to this guy right here, and I'm gonna convert to a curve point. And as you can see now, we get a nice round effect. I'm also gonna do the same thing here, convert to curve point. And now, of course, we need to simulate. So let's do a quick simulation here. Things are gonna re-settle um, down. Uh, one thing you can do, by the way, if you have a, a GPU card, you can go with fast uh, like uh, simulation. And I've seen that sometimes you get faster results. There you go. It's not as exact. Uh, you're not going to get the same precision that you get with CPU, but it's going to be faster. So as you can see, we can move this really, really fast with uh, with GPU. Now, if you want to create some extra wrinkles or, or just like move the dress a little bit, this is the, the moment to do so. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to do this. Maybe it might be interesting if we could keep the dress like a little bit... Uh, above the air so it looks like it's floating right and at any point you can press the space bar and it's gonna pause right there of course in this case it doesn't look great uh, but just giving you guys some options anyway so now we have this um let's stop the simulation and we're gonna jump into the uv pattern here so we're gonna go to the uv pattern now all of the tools or all of the elements right now they have the proper proportions we technically don't need to change the proportions of our object they're perfectly fine and we need to keep it that way because we don't want the texture on some parts of the object to be higher or lower resolution than the other ones. So I'm going to grab all of the patterns here on the texture window. I'm going to press um, my uh, box here. 
I'm going to make them smaller so that they fit on the square right here. Now, as you know, we have two patterns. We have this one, which is the veil, and we can have a separate pattern. And I'm going to grab these guys right here, and I'm going to try to fit them here. All of them. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to try to find um, the best possible like layout so that we can fit all of the elements in this thing and get the most uh, resolution possible. So I think something like this. You can, of course, take this into uh, other softwares like Maya or uh, Blender or any other like uh, packages uh, that you have and, uh, and do this manually, which, to be honest, I would probably do in a production setting. Uh, but this is also a great way to do it because, as you can see, it's not really difficult. Uh, it's not a difficult. They're not difficult patterns, right? Now, one important thing is you do want all of the patterns to be as straight as possible. We're following the same sort of like shape. So if these two guys are going like this, we don't want to keep them like so. It seems like one of them is like a little bit smaller. Let's fix that. Maybe I forgot to scale or, or something. And as you can see, since the skirt is the one that has the most, um, what's the word, the most uh, uh, surface area, it's going to be the one that has the most uh, UV area as well. Now here's where I can see that, hey, you know what, like maybe we can push this a little bit more. The more space we can get the better because that's going to give us more resolution to work with we could of course do udems some of you guys might be familiar with udems um we've talked about them before maybe we'll do them in another time uh and udems will of course allow us to have even more resolution now some might be like well why can't we just like increase the resolution on just this guy's right here again the problem is if you if you take a look at your, at your shirt you're gonna see that the detail of the fiber of the cloth is very similar right like it, it should have a very similar uh, amount of detail and if we scale this what's gonna happen is if you look at the seams where this thing connects to the skirt the grain of the of the cloth is gonna be bigger on one side than or the other and that it's not ideal I'm gonna grab this guy right here this is the veil and this one we can definitely make way 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 bigger I know this is overlapping right now and this is something that might be freaking someone out like no we're not supposed to overlap uh, uh, elements and you're totally right you're not supposed to do that however since these are two different materials it's okay we can, we can have them be uh, different elements. And we can even go into Maya and just like uh, increase it so that it, it, it matches perfectly. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest here with you guys. I'm not gonna go through the retopology process. We could do it, but it's gonna be a little bit longer. And I just wanna get a nice looking render right now. Um, if this was a character for games, of course, we would need to keep a T-pose, do retopology, capture all of the elements, all of the silhouettes. Right now, I'm just gonna go for rendering, uh, for like a concept render. So we're gonna export all of these triangles right here. It's not that much, like, uh, even though it looks like a lot of triangles, it's it's actually fairly, like, it's okay for this sort of stuff. So, so we can definitely uh, go with this. So I'm going to uh, select all of the patterns. Um, let's go back to our pattern window. Select all of the patterns. I'm going to say File, Export. We're going to export as FBX, very important, FBX. As you can see, I already have this one, Yorana. I'm going to export, say yes. And we're going to get this option. So do we want to export the avatar? No, we don't need the avatar. It's a ghost, right? So we don't really need it. We do want to weld the points so that the, all of the elements that are uh, sewn together are welded as well and, um, and uh, they don't like split. We want in this case to keep it thin uh, because we're going to be rendering it in, in, inside of Arnold. Uh, or no, uh, tomorrow we're going to do it uh, inside of Marmoset, as I just mentioned. Um, so we want to keep it thin. We don't want thickness in this case. Uh, we do want unified UV textures and uh, we don't need any textures. Right Let's just hit OK. Now, I am going to open Maya. Uh, we're going to do a quick thing here in Maya just to make sure everything is as, as nice as possible. Um, so let's give it a shot here. Let's wait for this. This one, we I don't think we need it anymore. So I'm just going to save real quick and let's uh, close it to save some resources. So I, so I know sometimes my computer gets a, a little bit overwhelmed by all of the softwares and, uh, and then the recording looks a little bit uh, weird. Do you like the new setup, by the way? I changed a couple things, make it look a little bit more professional. Some of my big achievements up there. And um, I changed the position of the microphone. I've been tweaking the audio. You know how I'm like very uh, neat picky about that stuff. There's been a couple of things that I didn't like as much from the, from the past audios. So let's go to the desktop and I'm just going to drag and drop the Jorona FBX here into my... And there we go. It's gigantic, by the way. Uh, the units inside of Maya and uh, and and um, and all of the softwares are usually a little bit different. So if I create a cube, technically a cube inside of Maya is one centimeter. So if I make this thing, let's say um, one centimeter, right, tall, you're gonna see that's still very small. I would need to make this 
like a thousand seventy five hundred. So as you can see, it, this this <laughs> this statue is like um, I don't know something like uh, seventeen meters tall uh, in real world scale. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna change this to point one, so that now it's uh, it's uh, it's proper like human size. I'm gonna select this guy, uh, this girl. I'm gonna freeze transformations. And uh, I want to split the veil from the from the head. Very easy way to do that. Just double click the veil, and I'm gonna say mesh and separate. And uh, we've separated all of the points there, and now we have two elements. I'm gonna call this uh, let's call this uh, Jorona veil, and we'll call this Jorona body. And the reason why I want to have them as separate pieces is because when texturing, I, I want to just take out the veil and focus on on the other elements. I'm going to select the body, and if we go to the UV editor, you're going to see that the UVs are perfectly there. So I know that if I were to apply a texture to this thing, it's going to work perfectly, perfectly fine. Let's go with this one right here. I'm going to say UV, UV editor. And one thing I do want to create here is I want to, I want to push this to the borders so that uh, if we I use a tileable texture with like a pattern or something, we can get something interesting. So I'm going to grab the whole UV shell, and uh, I'm going to say tools... What was it? There's there's one normalize. There we go. So normalize just pushes everything to the borders. And as you can see now, this is a perfect, perfect square. So that's it. We got everything that we need. Uh, uh, there's a couple of triangles there that look a little bit weird. So I'm going to select the object. I'm going to see UB or sorry, uh, mesh display, unlock normals, and then mesh display, soften edge. Let's see if that fixes it. I think it's the transparency, to be honest. So let me assign a new material. I'm going to assign a Lambert, just a normal Lambert. Yeah, there we go. So it was just the, the material. Now, there's one issue that we're going to have with this veil. And that's the fact that once we go into um, into Substance Painter and we bake the, the maps, we are going to get like dirt in the in the pillars that we have right here. So even though we will be doing the bakes, we might not be using that. I, I think the veil is just going to be a very, very simple, transparent uh, texture with just some like... Uh, uh, details and stuff the one that's going to have a little bit more texture to it it's going to be the the dress that that's another that's one of the other reasons why it's important to to separate them so now that we have both of these guys let's just shift p uh again delete history first transformation center pivot so that we have a good way to control them and we're going to say file export selection and i'm just going to override the same one that we had i i do this quite often I override the same FBX as long as each FBX is improving up on the last one so that I know that this new FBX as you can imagine has the proper UVs for the veil it has a material here and it has a material here so now let's jump into substance painter and uh, before we jump into the actual texturing uh, some of you guys might have played the game I haven't uh, but there's this lady the I don't know what her name is it's her, it's this character in Resident Evil 8, and she is wearing a, like, vintage dress as well. Um, and uh, even though this is, like, a satinated uh, silk dress or something, it does have texture to it, right? I'm gonna look for Yorona again, or La Yorona. And uh, you're gonna see that usually in the concept, she has this, like, tater damage cloths to her. So, so we're gonna go for something like that. Um, and there we go, we're now in Substance Painter. Again, I'm, I'm trying to kind of, like... Not rush this, but just go in a little bit of a speed, speed uh, session. Um, so that's why I'm not covering every single like bit here. Uh, 4K. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go really, uh, really, really uh, high there on the texture. 4K. Uh, there we go. Hit OK. And uh, when we import this, since we have two materials, as you can see up here, we can actually turn on and off the different elements. So we're going to be focusing on the dresses we mentioned. It's a couple of pinches there, eh, not the end of the day. That's because uh, if you remember, we did a couple of changes uh, to the uh, fabric, so eh, it's fine. So we're gonna go to texture set settings. We're gonna go down here to bake mesh maps. We're gonna bake the maps at 4K as well to get a very nice effect. And uh, we don't have a high poly. Some of you guys are familiar with this process. We want to uh, obtain information from the mesh. And uh, normally we have a high poly that comes from ZBrush and, uh, and we uh, import that sort of stuff here. We don't have that, but that doesn't mean that we can't get information. If I were to say bake, as you're gonna see right here, we can still get the normals, we can still get ambient occlusion, we can still get thickness, and that's gonna give us something like interesting to, to work with. Um, of course, there's a couple of maps that are not going to be as useful. For instance, thickness. I don't think thickness is going to be as good. Uh, there we go. Now, as you can see, uh, there's a big, big, big shadow right here because it's actually taking into account the other mesh, even though we're not seeing it right here. 
So I'm gonna go back to Bake Mesh Maps. Let's turn this off again. Bake Mesh Maps. And on the ambient occlusion, uh, where it says self-occlusion, I'm, I'm gonna say only same mesh name. Let's see if that works. Because what I want is I just want the ambient occlusion from this dress. I don't want anything else to be like influencing. There we go. So now it works properly. And we're only getting the ambient occlusion from the dress. Very, very uh, common e error that we can get there. So now it's time to we start um, that we start working with this uh, with this element. We do have some fabrics right here. So for instance, this rough align, fabric rough, kneaded sweater. Uh, but they're not that good denim fabric. And here's where again, uh, having your <laughs> your licenses and having access to some of the premium things, it's it's really it's really useful. It's really cool. I, I don't really know how to. Um, how to say this otherwise? So I'm gonna look for something like silk, and you're gonna say that uh, you're gonna see that we have like several like silk textures that we can use. I don't think silk is silk what we want. Silk is very fancy, right? It's very shiny. I don't know. Let, let's take a look at this one. I'm looking at the the pattern. Mm, that looks a little bit too modern. Uh, let's go for the linen. Linen is a little bit more antique, I think. Like woven linen. That's interesting. I'm not I'm not super well versed in like fabrics to be honest so what other is there like cotton cotton let's try cotton there we go this one looks a little bit better so that's cotton paper flannel jersey jersey skirt uh, i don't hate this one it looks interesting it has some nice texture to it. it's a little bit big though i'm between that one and like this like very traditional cotton canvas I don't know. Uh, cut on weave. This has some nice texture to it as well. This is where I would suggest sometimes not spending too much time. Well, as you can see, some of these are free, by the way. So you might be able to get some interesting ones. Mm, kind of like a silk velvet. Let's try some velvet. Carpet velvet, iridescent velvet. Mm, I don't know. Okay, let's play it safe. Let's go with this uh, uh, skirt. Uh, it's a little bit weird. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for being so... Uh, that's interesting, the lace. But I don't want this on everywhere. I, I kind of want to play with textures and, and, and other things. Natural rough cotton. I like this one. Let's go for this one. Because the, the detail is not as big. We have some um, like texture changes and stuff. And, and that looks cool. So I'm just going to jump into substance. Drag and drop this one here. Uh, this is a base material. And I'm just going to import this to my library. So I have it access anytime I need it. And there we go. So now we can start building these things. And I'm going to keep it quite simple. Let's start with this one. There we go. And the first thing you're going to notice is, of course, the size of the texture does not match the um, the size that we want for our element. So we need to increase the tiling. Let's try something like a 5. That's a little bit better. I actually don't want the grain to be so small. I want to see a little bit of the texture. That's still a little bit small. So I'm going to go 8. 8 seems a little bit better. I think our magic number is going to be 10. There we go. So 10, as you can see, gives us this very nice texture. We have some variation in the color. And of course, we're going to go to the color and we're going to bring this into like a like a beige, like an old beige color. There we go. Uh, we can, of course, change the roughness. So for instance, if we want the, the cloth to be a little bit less rough, a little bit shinier, I think I do want that. This is no longer cotton because cotton tends to be quite uh, flat. Right, so if we bring this, it starts looking a little bit more, again, like satinated, like plasticky. Again, not want to go all the way there, but something like this. Cool. Nice. So, I like this. Now, I do want to have a little bit of a difference in certain, like, uh, parts of the dress. So, I would imagine the, the sleeves, this sleeves right here, might be made out of a different uh, material. So, I'm going to use the same cotton here. And we're still going to go for, like, 10 uh, in the tiling. And we're gonna change the color and we're gonna make it uh pretty much the same one that we had right here just a little bit lighter okay and then i'm gonna say right click black mask i'm gonna go to here to the options and we're gonna select uvs and we're gonna select this uvs right here and as you can see we're gonna get a different sort of effect 
Now, since this is only the color, and we can actually tell, hey, we just want you to modify the color, we can actually play around with the intensity here, and we can find a nice tone there that doesn't break the, um, the silhouette, right? So, so we can have a nice variation there without really making it super, super obvious. So I like something like that. I even want the color, I think, to be that color. So I'm going to go here and just select the color as well. There we go. Just again, so we have a variation. We could even select the belt. Uh, I don't think I want the belt to be on. Uh, maybe we do. Let's keep it. Let's keep the belt. But I do want to bring this thing down a little bit more. I just want like a slight change in hue there to, you know, blocking the colors a little bit differently. And I'm even thinking about removing the, the sleeves. No, no, because they look like gloves. No, let's keep the sleeves. There we go. So that's it. We have the, the base like construction of our element. Remember, this guy right here, we're going to do a different process later on. I'll, I'll do it here, but uh, <laughs> we'll also do it later on. So um, over here, what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of damage and, uh, and, and just like grunge to the whole thing, right? Because as you can see, uh, La Llorona tends to go into like swamps and fountains and things like that, the forest. So we would expect there to be dirt everywhere. Uh, let's start with a very basic one, one of my like go-to uh, like generators, which is the dirt generator. So I'm going to grab my rust fine. I'm going to change this to like a more like a dark greenish color. There we go. As you can see, the, the size of the texture is quite nice. We get some nice patterns there. And we're going to right click, add a black mask, and we're going to right click, add a generator, and we're going to add a dirt generator. The dirt generator is going to go to all of the like crevices and uh, and 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 yeah, just like the the folds and stuff of the of the character. Uh, it takes the ambient occlusion as a, as a reference. That's why you can see that it creates like a lot of dirt here on the on the insides of the character which again it's fine but let's let's break it up a little bit this is the the, the tip that I always uh, give my students just add a few layer let's add something like a clouds and then I'm gonna increase the balance of the clouds and the contrast we can even increase the tiling a little bit and then we can use something called a uh, multiply to multiply the clouds against the dirt now, one thing I'm going to do here on the clouds, I'm going to change the projection to triplanar projection. And also on the dirt, we're going to, or on this guy right here, we're going to change the projection to triplanar projection. That should give us a, a softer look. And always, 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 you always want to blend your layers. You don't want things to just be like on top of things. So I'm going to change this to like an overlay and then play around a little bit with the, with the opacity. And as you can see, we start getting this very nice like damaged effect. This is just like a general noise, right? Like this is the first pass, just a general noise that's gonna prioritize the cavities. Now we're gonna add a second one and we can do the same thing. We can add another rust. I'm gonna add a black mask. But this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more precise. I'm gonna be more artistic. So I'm gonna go to my brushes. I'm gonna grab something like the dirt spots and I'm gonna paint where I want this layer to be. So I'm gonna start adding, as you can see this this uh, rust layer, this dirt layer on the on the lower parts of the skirt. I'm painting this mask, so I'm, I'm the one who decides where uh, where we get this. We can have a little bit of extra dirt there on the hands. Just a nice blend there. We're of course gonna change this again to a different color. Let's go for like a, again like a dark old and uh, we can go for like a uh, green looks very like interesting green bluish then looks interesting like that we're also going to change this to like an overlay so that it gets multiplied and maybe like play around with the opacity again to to blend things and make things look a little bit more natural kind of like if the if the cloth absorbed some of the some of the elements there it's a great way to add a again a little bit of like damage and stuff um, and now I'm going to use uh, a, another very common tactic to, to push out or, or bring out the highlights of the dress. Sometimes when, like, you can't really see it on, on my shirt because it's not <laughs> that damaged, of course. But sometimes uh, parts that are used more, especially like in denims, you've seen that, like on the knees and a little bit on the, on the quads, you get uh, like brighter parts because you, you rub those elements a little bit uh, more frequently. So... So you start seeing the like underlying like a uh, cleaner cloth if you wish. So I'm gonna add a few layer here. It's gonna be just white. We don't want to affect anything but the color. 
and we're gonna add or maybe the color and the roughness i think we're gonna make this rough really really rough we're gonna add a black mass right click we're gonna add generator and we're gonna add a, a metal edge wear which is gonna hit all of the high points as you can see right there and then if we change this to linear dodge and we reduce the intensity we're gonna get those very nice details that are gonna kind of like push the folds out and and give us a nice effect you can see it over here as well on the borders i do think we want to have this one underneath the dirt uh because the dirt should always be on top um and the, there's a filter that i like to use i'm going to right click when i use a filter which is the blur filter just to to soften up that effect a little bit especially in cloud that tends to be quite uh uh well dynamic this this blur will really soften up the the wrinkles a little bit more there we go so there we go. We have the, the very nice effect right there. Uh, what's well, something, again, a little bit more interesting to the to the dress. Uh, let's check the reference and let's see if we see something that uh, makes sense to have. Um, maybe like some random, some random, again, like colors and stuff. I'm going to go here. I, I like to play around with materials and find something that looks interesting. So for instance, I have this crumbling rock. You might like you might say why, why would we use a clumbering rock well just because it has like texture as you can see some interesting colors and stuff so we can um get rid of everything just keep the colors and use this as an overlay as you can see we get a nice interesting effect and then we can use the black mask a field layer and look for something maybe not a cloud but something like dirt if we look for dirt you're gonna see like we have this dirt one we have this concrete dirty let's try that concrete dirty and now that we have this, we can play around with the balance, we can play around with the contrast, and that's just going to add texture to the whole thing, right? Let's go here. I'm going to change the projection again to triplanar projection. And, um, and we can play around with the opacity. We can even like uh, add a paint layer, for instance, and, and remove where we don't want that stuff to be. So there's going to be places where we have a little bit more and a little bit less. We were artistically deciding where we want this sort of uh, this sort of effect. Um, I think that's a good uh, place right now. I think this this looks quite interesting um, for a simple texture uh, such as this. Uh, one other thing that I like to add is probably blood. Blood seems like a like a no brainer, right? So let's add the blood. I'm gonna add a few layer. It's gonna be of course red, not bright red. Let's go for like a dark red. I do want to make it a little bit metallic, just a little bit. This is not, again, physically accurate. You either are metallic or non-metallic, but I'm just going to add a little bit of extra sheen there. A little bit of roughness, and if we make this, again, overlay, it's going to look really dark. We can add a black mask. And now we can use something like the particle generators to create some interesting, like, cuts and stuff. So, I don't know, maybe... I don't, I don't remember the legend, like, the legend perfectly. But I do know that there was, like, we can, we can invent our own story, right? We can say something like, hey, um, she, uh, what's the word? She, like, cut her heart out because she was uh, devastated by what happened. Here we go. We can use this splat brush. It's a particle brush. So we, we throw it there. As you can see, we get this sort of effect. Uh, I mean, that's a little bit too much. Scratches. Oh, this is going to just look nice, but no, that's not what we're going for. Swarm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sandstorm, rain, puddle, shan. What's that? Now, there's a couple of different options that we can try. Or if you are feeling a little bit more, again, like artistic, we can just... What is happening? Mm. Oh. Hmm, that's weird. Why is it not working? Huh, I must have pressed something and it's now not working. Let's just delete this layer. Let's try again. There we go. Black mask. Well, um, 
Let's just again another field layer. There we go. Let's go for a red color. Black mask. That's really weird. What did I change? This alpha? Hmm, I'm not sure what I changed, to be honest. That's really weird. Re really weird. Let me pause real quick, figure out what it is, and I'll tell you guys. There we go. For some reason, the grayscale got replaced by something, and uh, yeah, I just I just took it out. So, let's add just... Um, uh, she has the bail, right? So, I think a good place to add the blood would be the hands. I'm gonna go for this dirt splash. Just, like, really stain the, the hands with blood. There we go. And as you can see, when we add a new layer, it just overlaps or overwrites whatever we had before it, like the dirt and everything. That's why the blending modes are so important, because we, we definitely want people to, to be able to see a little bit of what is uh, below whatever we're painting, in this case, the, the blood, right? So just uh, small little details there. Let's, let's really flood this like left part or left side. Maybe one of her victims tried holding um, on or something, and we get this. You can use your Wacom tablet or your, your pen display. Uh, I always call them Wacom tablets because they used to be the only ones, but now there's more competition. Uh, don't crash, don't crash. Thank you. So we just go to overlay, and there we go. And we can play around again with the with the opacity to to display how how like new or, or old this thing is. I'm gonna go with dots, sort of like splashes, right, of, of blood. So they're gonna help me fade the whole thing. And there we go. Cool. So now for the, um, uh, I actually, actually like that there's a little bit of sheen. One thing we can do is we can go here and we can go to the height and we can just push the height a little bit, just a tad bit. So it looks like a plaster of, of blood. I don't think it will be that shiny though. So I'm gonna like uh, change that a little bit. It, it should change the, the color slightly, but it should be fairly, um, again, fairly uh, easy to find. So let's go with this one right here with the veil because that's, that's gonna be like a really important one. And if you've seen veils, I, I always forget about the, the name of, uh, of the of the word but in well, let me let me look for it first before i show it to you and, and we get like a ban because uh they use this a lot in lingerie um so it's this thing right here it's called let's translate just want to be safe uh, lace it's called lace in english there, there we go so if i look for lace again unfortunately we tend to get there we go so there's no <laughs> we're safe here for now so uh, there tends to be a lot of lace in the, in underwear, right? So um, lace is this like detail patterns that we get. So if I look for lace pattern, we should find something, hopefully black and white like this. This is great that we can use as a tileable texture in our in our in our um, asset. So this one it's not great because it's a, a little bit um, like low res. Let's see if we can find like a higher resolution. Can we? Nope. Um, this one? Oh, it has a little bit of a line there. I hate that. I, I understand why they do it, but it's, uh, it's a little bit on This one is actually fairly nice and uh, we don't see the, the, the watermark as badly. So I'm gonna save this image. I'm gonna save it on my desktop for now. I'm gonna call this lace. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the material settings here and we're going to add a new um, material to it. So in this case, I'm going to say, or I'm going to add a new parameter, not here, sorry. Texture set settings up here on the channels, we're going to add an opacity channel. But to do that, or a transparency channel, to do that, we need to change the material to a, not the, the SM metal roughness, we're going to use this one, the metallic roughness with alpha blending. There we go. It shouldn't change like that much. Um, like you shouldn't see a change until we go here. 
and we add an opacity channel. There we go. And this one here, we're also going to add an opacity channel. Now, if we go to the layers and we add a new field layer, we can actually have a layer that has opacity. And if I bring the opacity down, as you can see, we're going to get the veil looking well like a veil. So I do want to have color. We're going to sample pretty much the same color here. Maybe just a little bit lighter, not white, but just a little bit lighter like that. And uh, and now I want to add the pattern to this whole thing. How do we add the pattern? Well, first, we need to add the texture to our um, project. So I'm going to grab this lace, get this here, set this as an alpha. And this is going to be, I'm just going to add it to the project import. So it's only assigned to this project. So I'm going to add a new layer. Let's uh, delete uh, or let's get rid of this opacity channel. This new layer is going to be the opacity layer. So if I make this opacity black, as you can see right here, and I add a black mask, it's going to be gone. But if I if I add a field layer to that black mask, I can drag and drop my lace right here. And as you can see now, the lace is going to be uh, mapped to the square that we have, uh, which is looking quite, quite nice. And the cool thing is we can tile this. So you can say, hey, you know what? I want this to be like 10 tiles, something like this. And now we have a really like a uh, scary looking veil uh, that has transparency to it. Another thing that we can do is I can uh, right click this layer. I can add a levels to the, or actually a levels to this one, to the mask. We can invert it, uh, which in this case we don't want to do that. And we can play around with the patterns here to make it a little bit more transparent. So if we start lowering this, as you can see, the, the lines are gonna be thinner and thinner, and we're gonna be able to see this a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Okay, so, so we can, it's kind of like controlling the, the opacity of the whole thing. So we can go really, really low for the, for the lace. And create something that looks interesting. We can also bring this down or this one up. That's also like another control that we have for the, for the pattern. We're going to have to redo this a little bit uh, later on inside of a marmoset set on, on tomorrow's live stream. So make sure to tune in. Um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty much it. Again, we can add like sheen, but that's a little bit more like parameter. Like we can add like sheen and this is like silky vibe to it. Uh, I do think one thing might be that we can add a little bit of dirt. I, uh, I don't think it's going to be uh, bad. So, uh, underneath the opacity, I'm going to add another like channel here. Let's go to the materials. Let's add like a rust. We're going to add the black mask, add generator, and we're going to add like a dirt generator. And let's play around with the with the generator as you can see it's right there uh let's change this to like a, again like a dark like a blue greenish hue there you go i'm gonna add another paint layer and as you can see right now it's affecting a lot of the upper parts right here so it's making a little bit of difficult to see the, uh, the pattern uh, of the lace. I'm just going to use my white brush to remove some of that. Because, uh, I mean, if you get lace dirty, it does become a little bit difficult to, to clean, I would say. I, I've, I've never bought lace, to be honest, but... I can imagine that it's not an easy material to work with. There we go. Uh, and I probably would like some like blood splatter, so I'm going to add a field layer. Uh, we don't want to affect opacity, we just want to affect color. It's going to be like, again, like a dark red color. In this case, actually, I do want to affect opacity. You're going to see why in just a second. Let's add a black mask uh, because what this is going to do is when we do a little bit of like splatter, like this dots erased, it's going to be adding some like opacity to certain areas because te technically the, the lace is everywhere, right? We would expect to see the lace everywhere. So we can add a, again, a little bit of, of blood and like blood drips and blood splatter in certain areas. Make her quite creepy. Let's change this to overlay. Uh, it's doing a weird overlay there. Let's bring it all the way here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to change to like dirt spots. Or like dirt splash. 
It's really weird that's getting that sort of like brown looking thing. I don't hate it, to be honest. I, I don't hate it. I'm a little bit not concerned, it's just weird that we get that sort of effect. It looks interesting, right? Like at least gives a, like a burnt texture to it. Looks interesting. Now the lace um, has uh, should have a cloth texture as well, so you can see how we're losing some of that right there. Maybe the tiling is a little bit too much. How many times did we tile this? Uh, feel ten. Let's tile this like five times. So it's a, like a bigger, a bigger lace. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm just gonna go for like a very traditional cloth. We can even use the cotton one. I know it's not supposed to be cotton, uh, and I don't want the the cotton itself. Like if we bring it all the way to the top, there we go. Let's increase the tiling a little bit to get like the texture, something like that. Let's do like uh, we had ten, right? So let's use ten as well. And what I want here is I wanna let's see if we can overlay this because <coughs> I wanna get the sort of like cloth texture on on the whole thing and then but then on top of that that would be really weird though wouldn't it no i don't think we're going to be able to do it for this particular material because we're using this alpha to cut out things so even if we add the little textures really not going to be seen so so we're going to have to play with this another thing i'm thinking about is maybe here on the levels there we go like adding a little bit of white everywhere so that we can actually see um like the, the things that are like holding the, the web together, if you wish. So as you can see, by, by modifying here the values, the veil now actually looks like it's like semi-transparent. I think this is a little bit closer to what I was uh, uh, going for. It's a little bit too shiny now. Uh, that's, that's the only thing I don't love about it. But uh, it looks interesting. Maybe going to this one. No, it's this one, right? No, it's this one. This is a, the original color. So let's just tone the original color down a little bit because we still get a very nice effect there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get a nice render right now. So I'm probably just going to have a, a simple render here. Let's see if it works because transparency sometimes doesn't work as nice here in iRay. Let's take a look. And I know this one went a little bit like, uh, what's the word? Well, not a little bit, quite a bit longer than, than usual. I apologize by that. But if you like, like let me know and, and I'll, be, I'll see if I can do like longer videos every now and then. Let's go for Corsica Beach. I really like this one. Or for something a little bit more like this bus crash. No. Atelier. Oh, there, of course. Of course we have to go for the creepy forest. <laughs> Let's just move the lights around to get a, a nice effect here. I don't remember if there's like a double-sided thing that we can activate on the material itself. We're not using or sh we shouldn't be using tessellation. There, we're going to be turning on the double-sided thing later on. This is just a Again, uh, basic stuff here. But yeah, so this is it for this one, guys. Um, let me see. I want another one. This, this is not... This is not really helping sell the, the product. Uh, nope. Nope. There we go, this is a little bit better. I, I mean, at least you, we can see it, right? I'm gonna go down here, I'm just gonna do a clear color so that we see the the character. And let's go darker so we can appreciate all of the colors and stuff. So yeah, this is pretty much it, guys. Again, not the best render, I know, but uh, this is what we're gonna be, what's gonna be on the thumbnail, or what you probably saw on the thumbnail. And then the next video, or we're not the next video, tomorrow on the live stream, it's going to be on Sunday, okay? Uh, it's going to be late for people watching um, all the way on the other side of the world in India. It's probably going to be like 8 p.m., I think, or 10 p.m., something like that. And uh, for people on the 
uh, Western Hemisphere. It's going to be early Sunday. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's been a blast having this special week. And on the 31st, we'll probably do something special as well. So uh, that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and check out Skillshare courses down below. Bye-bye.